can win, right? People are going to win out of this transaction as well. And that's why we do it. Um, and kind of going into the strategy that we use, it, it was really, really unique because Dave and I, we really wanted to solely own our properties and people kept telling us, well, you have to have joint venture partners to grow and that's the way to do it. That's the way to do other people's money. And yes, you can definitely do joint venture partners and I'm not against it or anything like that. I have a lot of friends that do it. However, we, for us, just really wanted to solely own so we can pass on our portfolio to our kids and keep all the cash flow. And the only guy I have to talk to decision-wise is Dave. Um, so that's why we really wanted to, to solely own. And that's what we did. So all our properties that we bought, um, so we have 240 units now in five countries. Um, they, they were all solely bought um, using none of our own money and without joint venture partners, whether it was owner financing or secured funds or promissory notes. So creative financing exactly made the biggest difference, right? It was a game changer. Yeah. How so? What did? What's the difference between the typical route of finding hard money lenders and private money lenders, and you know, trying to, you know, lowball the offer to get into a deal to make the numbers work for you? What did creative financing? do for you? What creative financing strategies do you use the most? Well, the most probably when I started was definitely owner financing. We did a lot of owner finance deals where the owner would finance part of the deal. And not every deal makes sense. And not every owner will want to do this, but they do, not all of them, but when they do, it's because they understand how it works, right? They do. I hold financing for four different people as well. For And I've never met them. I have no idea what they even look like. Why would I do that as an investor? Because I understand creative financing and it also benefits me where I'm still making interest and I don't even own the asset anymore. I get to defer my capital gain. So there's tax implications as well. So owner financing is definitely um, one of my favorites. Uh, I, I love secured funds as well. So in Canada, that would be RSPs or TFSAs in the States would be like your 401k um, and also promissory notes, which has been really helpful on certain deals, whether it was for closing costs or renovations or just for the part of the down payment that I needed as well. Awesome. I love it. What? Yeah, yeah. It can be one thing, one strategy that can be a game changer, can't it? Absolutely. And, and then when you learn even more than one, then, okay, well, the owner's not willing to hold financing, but it's an amazing deal. I, I have a great exit strategy. I know how I'll be able to pay back the lender. Um, well, I'm not going to stop there. Okay, maybe the owner's not interested. That's going to happen. You're going to get some no's. Well, I'm going to go use one of the other methods instead. All right. And so 240 units. How long have you been in real estate investing? Well, we started, if we count the years back when we were just very slow. Yeah. Going, I mean, overall, we've been in it for over 25 years between Dave and I. Um, but that was, a, again, at first, it was a very slow. Uh, yeah, process. really struggling along. Exactly. When did you really hit your strive and like things start, you started to get momentum? Because, you know, there's no shame in that journey. Like ha having someone like you who has so much experience and had had the struggle is real, right? The struggle is real. <laughs> And, and trying to do it on your own and trading time for dollars and trying to figure it out and raising your own money and just trying to acquire one every year to learning just a couple of game-changing strategies to catapult. Like, tell us that journey. Like, you 25 years, where was the momentum? Where did things start to shift for you? Really, the shifting point, I mean, my kids were, uh, I have three kids, um, and I knew that I wanted, they, they were growing up as they always do way too fast, and I just remember on, on my mat leave with my youngest one, I remember my entire mat leave thinking like, I want to see him get on the school bus, and I want to see him get off the school bus, and I want to be there with my kids, my two older girls after school, so if they're having a bad day, they can talk to mom right away, I'm home, and I'm there for them. Um, but with my job, I wouldn't be able to do that because my work hours, I'd miss the bus either before or after or quite often both as well. So I just, and I think that became, I had a strong why. I wanted to be that present mom. I wanted to still be an independent entrepreneur woman because that's in me and I like growth and doing all those things. But I really wanted to essentially create my own freedom, spend the days the way that I want as opposed to somebody else dictating it. So I think 
that urgency of my kids growing up was was definitely huge. Um, not knowing what I didn't know, so I that's why we worked so hard to try to get ahead. Um, and then after uh, reading the the rich dad poor dad, um, and just deciding that we're going to do this, Dave and I were on the same page. And that year we just did it. We worked extremely hard. Twelve properties in twelve months. Like we did not watch TV that year, right? <laughs> like except right. For, for the kids or family night. Okay, ta- pause there. Talk yeah. about that, like because. It does take sacrifice, right? There, in order to fit this in, when you're working full time jobs, you know, people say, "Oh, I don't have time." Well, how much TV are you watching every night? Well, you know, like, what did it yeah. take? Because I can hear the commitment was strong for both of you. What was well? One, what did it take? Like, as far as sacrifice, and what was the motivation under that that was driving that for you? Yeah. Um, and, and at first we just started, okay, let's do the first deal. Um, and of course, what sacrifice? Well, we stopped watching, you know, our nighttime TV or shows. Um, and I didn't want, we both didn't want to sacrifice time, of course, with the kids, because that was a whole point. We didn't want to affect them. Um, so we went, we would get up really early um, in the morning. So before the kids would get up, we'd spend the first two hours just working on um, finding deals or what we're going to do and how about this, you know, what it, everything that consists of real estate. So that that was our main time was in the mornings before the kids would get up. Then of course it's up and then you're off to work and all those things. Um, and then at nighttime, as soon as my kids would go to bed, we would pretty much go to bed as well because the next day we had to do it all over again. And we wanted to have that energy in the morning. So, so you just- found you were early birds getting the worm that that's where your energy and time was. And that's just us. Like, and, and that's the thing, whatever sure. we're- you were morning people we love getting up I still do I was up at five o'clock this morning and at the gym and and doing all those things and that works for us Uh, but then at nighttime you won't find me I'm I'm in bed pretty early as well right and that works for my lifestyle Uh, but it was really really doing that and committing to it sometimes we divide and conquer on tasks as well just try to get ahead um, and just focusing and then it became because it was a passion, this was also fun for us. I mean, we did enjoy a lot of it. Did we sacrifice? Yes, but it was a lot of fun too. Like once we got the cash from one property, I'm like, oh, okay, if I buy another property, this. And and then we started calculating, well, by the time we hit these many amount of this amount of doors, Mel, I could quit my full-time job. Um, so it, it became almost like this incentive to keep going because it was I was getting closer and closer with every property um, that I was that I was purchasing. Awesome. I love it. You know what I love about your story, Mel, is just how real it is, like how how hard you guys worked. You know, you're talking about real. It's not a fairy tale. How hard you worked, how much you grind, how much you sacrifice. And there's a bunch of people watching. Um, Seville and Smith said, I love that. Awesome. Um, My VA Rose is on here. Hello, everyone. Nanette Henry is saying hi to everyone. Um, so is Catherine, Kathy uh, Thornburg, Leah McFalls, Kiri is here. Sorry if I, I didn't get your name there right, uh, Leah. Uh, Rachel and, um, and the others that I, I had welcomed earlier. People are very engaged because you're real. Thank you. You're, you're, you're telling the truth about the story. You know, I worked for a fortune builder, a, a, a real estate education company, and they teach the fundamentals of real estate investing. And I would marvel because I've coached thousands of real estate investors. I would marvel at people spending anywhere from fifteen to fifty thousand dollars on a program, and then I basically was babysitting them to do the curriculum that they paid for. And it's like education isn't enough if you're not going to take action. And I would recommend, and I want to see, I want you to weigh in on this, Mel, is it can be overwhelming to just get lots and lots of education and not do anything. If you learn a little bit and then implement that piece that you just learned, and then you learn a little more and then you implement that piece it's a lot less overwhelming. It's more practical. You start to get confidence in your abilities. You start to see results. What do you think? Like, how was your journey, yours and Dave's journey, as far as the learning and implementing, learning and implementing, and how did it evolve over time for you? 
And honestly, it, it's ongoing. I still learn today. And we bought a lot of units. We're doing it in five five countries. And, and there's still always something. Five countries. Five countries now. Um, but the reality is, yes, we are still learning because we are doing different things. And I'm open to, to learning. And I, you know, I have three coaches still. I invest in myself. And, but then, of course, I implement as well. Um, so I think you're bang on. I mean, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you're not ready to take action, you're just not going to get the results that you're after. And I think that's often what happens is that you want to do it. And, 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 but then that action piece where you're actually, okay, okay well, analyze the deals, put in that offer, put the right conditions in. And it's scary if you don't have the right information and knowledge. So a hundred percent, you should have a, a quote that you know, like, and trust. And, and that has proven results with their students and all those things. Um, but at some point, it is up to you to have ownership in your journey and go and implement it and ask questions when you're stuck so so they can help you through it as well. Love that. Love that. What would you say your biggest challenges have been? Oh, boy, we've had so many. I mean, it, it started off with um, well, we grew very, very quickly. So we bought 12 properties in 12 months, plus we had some already. So I was self-managing at that point of 76, 76 units. So that was a huge growth that happened very quickly. Um, but then of course we were just uh, bottlenecked. We couldn't handle it anymore. Um, do I regret that journey? No, because I got really good with systems and implementing things. And now I can, um, talk about the property management piece of it as well but that was something that you know was very very challenging at that point because we uh, we grew so quickly um but now we outsource <laughs> we had our own property management for company for a while and now we outsource so i can really focus on on that um i mean we had so many roadblocks as well or or, or made mistakes right because you don't know what you don't know and and not because you're not smart not because i'm not smart but yeah there's certain things i didn't have yeah. my structure was completely wrong we had to change it you know, all those kind of things that are really, really time consuming and frustrating and very uh, financially, um, well, it, it's expensive. Costly, yeah. 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 And would you like, would you say fear, frustration and failure were just kind of a regular part of the process of learning as you went along, dealing you know, with the fear I, and frustration and failing forward and making mistakes and learning from them? Talk a little bit about that because I think that stops a lot of people. I think that stops a lot of newer investors. They feel like they have to know everything and be perfect at it. And they don't realize that you need to actually take action and you learn by doing, you learn from mistakes. Talk a little bit about that. Well, yes. And I'll talk about what, about my story, but before I do, like think about driving the first time, whether it's a car or a bicycle, right? It's that fear of actually doing it the first time. And if you remember the first time, like I was white knuckled, right? I'm hanging on so tight and it's uncomfortable. And after a while, then you get comfortable. And after years of doing it, you're drinking coffee and singing and, you know, in, in a great party. analogy. I love it. Yeah. You become, you become more comfortable. Doesn't mean you don't have fear sometimes, right? If you're in a new city, right. there's a lot of traffic, um, but you do become more comfortable. And that's what I became comfortable with. And my, I guess my own confidence came uh, from doing it over the years built up. And also knowing that, hey, have I had failures? hundred percent. Absolutely. I made many mistakes. I had failures. Um, but what I also know is that failure and not coming back from it, it was just, it wasn't failing. It was a roadblock. Um, and I think now whatever challenge happens, if something happens to us and, and things have happened throughout many years, of course, if we go, oh, this is upsetting or I didn't expect that. And whether it's a big challenge or a tenant left the mess and I'm, you know, I was down on my knees cleaning the place and it was, you know, crying in deficit, like uh, whatever challenge, big or small um, that you have that, you know, that, okay, remember that time. And often we'll say that if something comes to us and it's like, oh, well, this really sucks. Or if this situation is unfortunate, we'll think back at, remember when this happened and got through it. Remember when this happened is like, okay, if we handled all of those things. Yeah. You have that experience to draw on that gives you confidence. And the more experience you get, the more confidence you get. And you get that you're going to survive it, right? Like exactly. Well, you can an option. So yes, roadblocks, yes, difficulties, yes, you know. A yes, setbacks. Stuff. Yes. I mean, have you ever lost money? Oh yeah, tons investing? of money. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you're here to talk about it. You survived it. You have 240 units in five countries. Talk about how you recover from that when you've lost a lot of money. Talk about the mindset and how you recover from that. I think a lot of it is looking at number one, bigger picture. Um, I hear a lot of 
of, of people often, they talk about the bad situation, let's say with a bad tenant that cost a lot of money, they couldn't evict them and, and all those kind of things. And yes, you're looking at that specific situation. It's really, really frustrating. Um, even if it's your first property, maybe, maybe you lost 10000 or $5,000 because they weren't paying. But bigger picture, if you hang on to that property and you're able to push through this couple of months of, of difficulties and the mess and the, and the renovations, and you can refinance a property in four or five years and it's increased by 50 or 100K, um, bigger picture, are you still further ahead? Yes, if you did it properly, right? So it's often really looking at the big situation, the big picture, as opposed to just looking at that that moment of, of difficulty. And also yeah, so, this opportunity to learn, right? Like, I mean, from my mistakes. Absolutely. Some of my mistakes are, are the best things that, in a way, that's ever happened to me. Because now it's like, I'll never do this again. I'm going to have this person in place. I'm going to do this. And, and, and you know, it, it happened really for a reason. If you choose to do something about it and really learn from it. Yeah, I think with the mindset there, it's looking for the value in every experience you have instead of being victim of circumstance or oh my god and people that are failures fail once and then they never try again people that are successful are are masters at failing they just didn't let it stop them and i think a lot of times it's just about being resilient and persevering and one way to do that something i do working with clients is look at the value you're getting out of what we would consider maybe a setback or a negative experience and asking the right kinds of questions about that. Like, okay, what can I learn from this so I can prevent this from ever happening again? What are the gifts and the lessons I'm learning? You know, what could I have done differently that would have been a better result for me? Things like that bring value to a setback or a failure versus just a lot of people will use that to give up. So would you agree with with what I'm saying? Uh, I couldn't have said it better. A hundred percent. You said it uh, very well said. Um, and, and often we, you know, for, for those who who have kids, for example, we're very quick to give advice to them, like, "Hey, it's okay. Learn from the situation. You didn't win the baseball. Okay, that's giving okay. them permission to fail, so they're not but yet, afraid." But yet often, yes, and we do that often for our children. Yet we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to, it's okay to fail. And I very proudly tell my kids all the time, because they'll, they'll come to me as well. What happens if we don't win the tournament this weekend, mom and hockey? My little seven-year-old would just asked me that last weekend. Um, and then, of course, we talked about failing. I'm like, oh, my gosh, well, hey, there's so much opportunity and if, if you fell as well. And what could you have done better? And, and it's okay. And you celebrate somebody else's win and, and all those different things as well. And knowing that us as adults and as entrepreneurs, we have to remember that as well. I mean, there's nobody that I've ever, ever met that's highly successful that hasn't failed um, at some point in the journey. They just never gave up. That's it. It's persevering through it, you know, not giving up. I love this. Love this, Mel. Uh, any, any, any ask for like, where are you at right now? What's the focus of your business right now? Right now, um, well, we we this year in 2022, um, we really diversified um, in various countries. So that's been that's been uh, a lot of fun. Let um, me interrupt there. How many? Which countries are you in? You said you're invested in five countries. Yeah. So in Canada, the U.S., uh, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Dominican Republic as well. Nice. All right. And um, a big part of our journey has been just to really be able to create the life that that we want with that, right? And, and that's really what we try to um, live by, to really, you know, we're going on numerous trips a year before I wouldn't have been able to do that. So really maintaining the lifestyle. Years ago, it's interesting because if you actually look at some of my really first podcasts, I was all about, I want a thousand units and I was so determined, but now, and, and that's okay as a journey. Uh, as you go through your journey, perhaps you're going to shift as well. It's not about the number of units. Um, it's really about the lifestyle and how I want to spend my time um, and the flexibility. So now often for us, it's, of course, we, we continue to buy and we're probably going to look at, at different countries in 2023 as well. But it's also being able to um, do different things with our money, right? So for example, we sold a couple of properties. Sometimes that happens as you grow your portfolio, you do the, the monopoly game, right? You take the money from here, you put in a different asset. Um, well, I'm holding financing on a property because I, I I'm holding owner financing or a VTB on it 
Well, think about that. I purchased a property using none of my own money, no joint venture partners. So I'm not splitting profits. I sold the property, made money when I sold it as well. And I'm still making money because they're paying me interest and it benefits me from a tax perspective. So just being able to do some, some different creative things like that. Um, and, and I don't have the property, like it's zero work for me to, to do this type of thing. So you're diversifying into other countries and you're moving more into financing as, as going into the next level a combination, of your business. I mean, in a combination, I think it's just not now that the growth has happened. I don't have to go buy one year about 119 apartments. Um, and that was my big, and I'm not saying we're going to do that again. We're looking at creating a fund. I mean, we're always, we love learning. And I think um, that's just who we are. As, as, as a couple, um, I think growth is always going to continue for us. It, it just takes form in, in, it takes different forms as we grow, right? So uh, one of the things we're, we're working on, for example, is a, is a fund. Uh, it's something new that we're, you know, in background, just starting slowly to, to kind of pick at, right? Um, we're continuing to grow our action family mentoring program. That's dear and true to our hearts. We want to keep changing lives for that. Um, and of course, just really being able to have the flexibility and be there because I can with my kids while they're still um, at home, right? So, um, so just a combination of that. And, and we love traveling, so we're, we're doing lots of travels as well. Yeah, that's definitely on my bucket list as well. But um, um, so is there, do, you know, besides being investors, is there any any side hustle you guys do? Is there a program or anything that you wanted to share with people before we wrap up and get to your rooftop message? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, and we never thought we'd become mentors. It wasn't something that was on my bucket list or anything like that. But um, for those who don't know us, we were in a really, really bad car crash back in, in 2018. And and the oh. mind, yeah, it was a highway rollover. We ended upside down. It was it was horrific. Um, they can't believe that we survived. Um, and it was a day that changed our lives for many, many reasons. And and one of them, we would decide, like, why are we not? Because we kept it all a secret. We never didn't tell anyone. Um, and then about we thought, the accident that was before the accident. So I bought 12 properties in 12 months, um, okay. so I bought a unit, and then we were on our way to a conference and the accident happened. Um, and then it was that mind shift that, you know, what are we going to be known for? Yeah, we have money. Yeah, we have properties, but we want to, we want to help people. We just became like, it just became really that, you know, that gut feeling that you get when you had a life altering experience yeah. that yeah. like changed your Everything. rearranged your molecules. Didn't exactly. It? Yeah. Um, and that's when we created the, uh, I mean, we tested it at first and did some beta program, but essentially that's when shortly afterwards we launched the Action Family Mentoring Program. Um, and now we've helped over 1,500 students uh, grow their portfolio using them, their own money and, and no joint venture partners. And, um, you know, I absolutely love it. I have the best job in the world. Like I get to help people retire or quit their job or work less hours or be there for their kids. And yeah, it's a uh, I have the best job in the world. I love that. Love that so much. You're such an inspiration, Mel. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and I hope someday I get to meet Dave, and I'm sure we'll stay in touch. So, yes. you know, if you had a, if you were to jump on a rooftop and you had a captive audience of people that were just hungry to learn whatever they could from you, what would your your words of wisdom be? I would just say. If all these other people can do it, I'm sure you see success stories, you see all these different people doing things. Why can't you? Um, and that's when I realized that I could as well. And I think at first I, I lacked some self-esteem that, I, you know, who's Mel Dupuis? I come from a town with no street lights. Like, you know, it's, and, 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 but then if all those people can do it, they have one thing in common. They have knowledge, they have resources and they, they took action. And as soon as you start taking those three and you, and you go at it, you know, you can become limitless as well. Awesome. Love it. I love that. You are such a delight, such an inspiration. Oh, thank you. And I do really appreciate that we finally got to meet in person. We've yes. done a lot of communicating. Yes. But, the and, universe brought us here finally, yes, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. And I, you're the kind of person I love interviewing because it's real and yet inspirational. You're showing anyone who's watching this like oh my god I could do it I could do it like if they can do it and they struggled for 25 years and look at where they're at and they survived the ups and downs and they just kept learning and taking action and were resourceful and now it's not even about that anymore it's about what can we do for other people how can we pay it forward that is just such a beautiful success story and 
So I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come on to the podcast and be my guest. And well, this I was so you- much fun. Again, I have the best. Was it? Well, Good. I'm uh, glad. Yeah. And, and I hope that you and Dave can come on in the new year sometime, or maybe just Dave. Yeah. So, you know, reach out to him and let him know and reach out to us and either my VA Rose or I will get you guys booked to either in the first or second quarter of next year. It would be great okay, to just stay lovely. in touch. All right, everybody. That's Mel Dupuis and her husband, Dave, and they have, they are truly the epitome of success as a real estate investor who have, have run a marathon. It's been a long, arduous journey for them. They never gave up. They persevered. They were resilient. They kept bouncing back from failure, learning from it, and were determined and didn't give up. If they can do it, so can you. So please Join us every Wednesday at noon Eastern or every Friday at noon Eastern for spot, a member spotlight. Now, the member, member spotlight is an opportunity for members in the community, newer investors, to be coached by me on the spot there in the interview and to just share the journey, what it's like while you're becoming in that process. I think showing top five percenters success stories like Mel, but also showing the other side of the spectrum makes it real. And these interviews are designed for us to build community, get to know each other. We're all accessible. If you want to connect with Mel, please just put something in the comments, tag her, reach out to her. Um, She's very much available. So am I for guiding you on your journey to becoming a successful real estate investor. I want to thank you so much. Wish you all a happy holidays. Thank you so much, Mel, for your time. And um, we'll be sending you an email with the link to this so you and Dave can use it where, however you want to. Absolutely. No, that sounds great. So, and for those who want to reach out to us, if you find, search Mel Dupree, I may not come up too much because on social media, I'm better, better known as Investor Mel and Dave. So if you go on YouTube or Instagram, Investor Mel and Dave, you'll be able to find us. There. Yeah, that's the way you find yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, Mel. It was such a delight. Thank you, everybody, once again, for joining us. If you have someone you know that's just crushing it in real estate investing and you think they'd be a great guest on our podcast we are booking into february and march right now for the top five percent podcast on wednesdays or if you are a newer investor on your journey and you'd like to get a little more visibility in the community get to know more people get a little support on your journey then please reach out to me to schedule you for a member spotlight on Fridays at noon. I'm Rayana Starr. I'm your host, and I wish everybody happy holidays and have a fabulous week. Happy hump day to everybody. Thanks, Mel. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.